So last flight didn't go too well and we completely destroyed the rocket because the, uh, the chute didn't come out. That means uh, we're gonna need to queue up a build montage. So my build technique basically starts with applying decals to the outside of the tube. Those get printed off and I've developed a uh, custom decal template based on a paper model uh, to wrap and skin the rocket, which gives it a real great look. And uh, you don't have to do any painting really. It's all prep work with the decals. With the whole airframe rebuilt, I can then start working on the mechanics. So the whole thrust vector control mount, uh, the gimbal inside the rocket that allows it to steer, uh, that had to be completely rebuilt. So I built that with new set of parts, glassed it in resin to make it a little stronger and installed that. Almost the entire rocket at this point is brand new, except for a few parts that have transitioned from every single version of this rocket that I've built from day one. Uh, so it still has some of the same parts, but more and more it's becoming a new vehicle. So the up portion of the last flight, really good. The down portion, not so much. So in an effort to fix that, I had to go in and troubleshoot everything. So that means cracking open the, uh, the airframe, going into the code, and uh, doing a lot of work on the software to try and figure out what's actually wrong with it. I had to go really deep into the software to troubleshoot what the problem was. And this involves a lot of time spent in front of the computer and a lot of time just staring at my lines of poorly written software. I don't consider myself the best author of software. Uh, coding was always not my strong suit, but I know enough to get by. And the, uh, the work on this project has shown me a lot of the deficiencies I had. And I've had a lot of improvement along the way too in learning things. Uh, integration with hardware is always challenging, especially in something like this project. To improve my understanding of what my software is doing in flight, outside of just flying it again, I ended up uh, implementing a thing called hardware in the loop testing. This testing is intended to run the software that's already on the rocket in an environment that's simulated inside of itself so that I can prove out whether or not it works. So what exactly is hardware in the loop testing? Well, what we're basically doing here is we're taking previous flight data, we're plugging it into the computer, and we're inputting it into the rocket's avionics. From there, the avionics are bypassing the sensors on board and we're going straight into the flight controller algorithm, making it think it's actually receiving flight data on the test stand. From there, it runs an entire controller loop with false data believing it's flying and validating the software. So over the course of well over a month, I went in and ran loop after loop of flight with this rocket using the previous rocket's flight data. I selected one of the straighter and more predictable flights that went much higher than the last one. So I basically took the data from the last flight I fed it into Microsoft Excel, and then it spat out a trend line that replicates the curve of the data. Because it's a rocket and it's going up and it's coming back down, it pretty much follows your classic parabola for an object that's thrown up in the air and comes back down. I was able to take an equation, fit it to that parabola, and then that produces something based on time that tracks the rocket's position and movement in, uh, in 3D space, basically. Uh, I didn't really bother with any of the orientation stuff because I could actually simulate that on the test stand with the propeller and other systems that I already used to tune and test out the rocket on the ground. The computer basically sees all of this data file as real inputs, and then it tricks it into thinking it's in flight. So I'm able to simulate a full flight up to the same altitude as that previous launch over and over and over again, where the different events and flight uh, modes basically are triggered as we go. I'm able to switch between flight modes of being on the ground, launching upwards under the engine power, then coasting, 
reaching Apogee, and then falling and going through all the different pyrotechnic channels, including that pesky parachute. Having it connected to the computer too lets me get a lot more insight into what's going on inside the software. By seeing everything line by line, I can know exactly when things are triggering, and I can also generate new outputs from the software that the data file on the original flight might not have had. By literally doing this, by doing this whole process, literally hundreds of times, I've been able to work out a lot of the bugs in the software because I can basically fly it on my desk over and over and over again to see how it performs. This type of software testing, like I said, is used on basically everything. We have it on Dream Chaser, a specific lab is devoted for most launch systems and spacecraft to doing this and acting as a software or hardware in the loop test facility. This prevents any problems once you're in flight because nobody really wants that. Uh, building these type systems is really hard and this is just one of those things that you can do to buy down the risk. Unfortunately, it makes it take longer because you're testing and the more you test, the less you're flying but it hopefully ensures that when you do fly, you have a successful flight. And while I haven't flown this vehicle as of yet with the new software, I have a lot more confidence in it going forward. And I believe when it goes up next time, it's going to deploy that parachute. One of the other big improvements I've had on this new rev of my Falcon 9 rocket is an umbilical system that makes it way easier to connect to the launch pad once I'm at the launch site. There's a magnetic connector that I basically modeled after the soap dispenser that I have in my kitchen that uses a magnetic connector. These are kind of common on like MacBooks and some laptops and tablets, but I was able to basically build my own using 3D printed parts and pogo pins off of Amazon. It has just enough force retaining the pins against the contacts to have an electrical connection between the ground and the flight vehicle. And then whenever the strong back pulls away and the launch vehicle begins to go up. It will detach and we'll get a really cool slow motion shot, hopefully just like these. This is a lot hardier and less prone to damage than my old system where every single launch, it would cook the connectors and uh, I would have to file them down and sand them. And there would be a lot of test and retest at the pad uh, just to make sure that things worked because the soot and the corrosion from the engines really wreaks havoc on anything on the actual pad surface down here. So what's next? Well, we're gonna fly this thing. Maybe not quite yet, but a lot of the testing I've been doing on the pad has been integrated between launch pad and rocket, and I can run these same hardware in the loop and software in the loop tests just on the launch pad, ready to go over and over again to simulate launches. And more and more and more, I've gotten the reliability down to where I really believe in the system and the uh, communication between Rocket giving its go no go pull to the launch pad and continuing the countdown has been working flawlessly as of late. For this launch, just like some of the previous ones, I've been continuing on making mission patches for each flight. But uh, as of late, I've been actually converting them into real patches. So these are a vinyl sticker that I've made for each mission that I've flown with my Falcon 9 rocket, and I'm providing them as a uh, kind of a giveaway to patrons so that they have a little piece of each of the launches that I do. Uh, the way I'm trying to operate with these is uh, if you're a patron and there is a, uh, a launch basically while you're a patron, uh, you'll get the mission patch for that specific launch. And uh, provided I have them, some of the past ones as well. So this mission patch basically commemorates the rebuild of the rocket from totally destroyed to flight ready again. Uh, around the edge are the names of all of the different people who provided support and basically made this able to fly again. This is just one of the many patches that I've been working on. Uh, in addition, I also have one for SLS coming too. And uh, this one is going to be really great because we're getting close to flight and I am very excited to get this thing flying. A lot of the problems that we solve on Falcon 9, as always, are going into the more complicated launch vehicles, like the two-stage Falcon 9 with the upper stage and my SLS vehicle where it has three cores that all need to work together and we're gonna be running a ton of hardware in the loop and software in the loop testing to make that happen. So I just wanna thank anyone who's made it this far into the video. Uh, for watching. Uh, this is a lot of effort to put these things together. 
and trying to capture the story along the way. And if you want to participate in some of that story, uh, you can go on my Patreon and subscribe. At any tier, uh, you'll be able to get some of these mission patches and some of the custom stickers that I've come up with along the way. I'd like to continue this going forward. I really like the feel of each of the mission patches and how they kind of contribute to the story. And it adds another layer, I think, than just watching these. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.